Hello everyone and welcome back to our time together. I'd like today to begin with a question and you can perhaps discuss these uh, questions in class by pausing the video or by having a whole class discussion at the end of our session. My first question is this, what would you like to be when you grow up? It's a question perhaps which we think about a lot when we are younger. Uh, what would we like to do after we've left school? There will be as many different answers as there are different children in the classroom. Of course, sometimes our goals change and develop, and we might even surprise ourselves by doing something completely different in the end. I'm not sure I quite remember when I decided that I wanted to become a priest. It certainly wasn't an idea I had uh, when I was younger at primary school. I think I then remember wanting perhaps to be a teacher or a doctor or maybe something else as well. A study this year came up with the most popular answers which children give about their futures. So I'll run through the list and you can see whether your dream job is on there too. The list goes as follows. These are the things which uh, lots of children want to be. It includes dancers, actors, musicians, teachers, scientists, athletes, firefighters, detectives, writers, police officers, astronauts, pilots, doctors, lawyers, and vets. Did you hear your dream job on the list? Don't worry if it wasn't, that dream is personal and special to you. We call thinking about our futures aspiration. We say that we should aspire to be the best we can be. And if you think about it, we also use the language of height. We should say that we should aim high, to have high standards, that we should try to be top of the class. Now, when we think about it, this is actually because of how we think about heaven. When we reach up, the highest thing that we can reach for is God. We talk of someone going up to heaven, although of course it isn't really just beyond the clouds. But heaven is as high above the earth as the sky sometimes seems. In some languages, the same word is used for the heavens and the skies. We reach up, we aspire to become better. And in doing so, we're reaching towards heaven reaching towards God. This is because we believe that God is the greatest and the best person in existence, and so heaven must be the greatest and best place in which to live. In becoming better, in following our dreams, in fulfilling our aspirations, ultimately what we're striving for is to become closer to God. There are two thoughts then that I'd like to take from this suggestion. And the first is a little bit surprising, as we'll go on to see. Reach high, we say, aim for the stars, because God, the greatest, lives up in heaven. But heaven isn't, for Christians, where God stayed, because Christians believe that God came down to earth from heaven at Christmas time, which of course now isn't that far away. God, the greatest, came down out of heaven to live on earth among women and men. But the earth, as we know, isn't the greatest. It's sometimes a messy place, a miserable place, sometimes a place of suffering and sin. But God came down into all this confusion. He came down in order to sort it out. God came down from heaven at Christmas when Jesus was born at Bethlehem. God, who is beyond our understanding, became the smallest sort of human being, a tiny baby child. And this is how we encounter God. We find him in Jesus. We find God the greatest in the limits and the sufferings of Christ. So if we want to fulfil our dreams and rise up to our ambitions, what we actually need to do is to aim low. Surprising, isn't it? If you want to reach the highest, you need actually to go low. By saying this, what I mean is that we have to be humble. We have to put other people first. We mustn't always be pushing for pole position, but we must do as Jesus did and be humble and be kind. In fact, there are two good reasons for doing this, both to do with how we can reach up high. A bit like those fleas and frog hoppers in an earlier session, uh, which could jump up high into the sky, one way to get as high as possible is to have a spring in your step. Try it. If you want to jump up high, what do you do first? Well, you squat down, you bend your knees, because like squashing a spring, you're squeezing together all that potential energy, which will then thrust you up high into the air. To go high, you have to start low. To be the greatest, you have to be humble first. The other way in which we can go up higher is if we give each other a hand. Imagine needing to get something from a shelf high above your head. 
One way to do it would be for someone very carefully to give you a piggyback. By sitting or standing on one another's shoulders, we can reach higher than we would do just by ourselves. But to give someone that piggyback, you first need to squat down low enough for them to climb onto you. Again, going lower in order to reach higher, even if that does seem a bit funny at first. So to fulfill our aspirations to reach as high as we can, we need to follow the example of Jesus and reach down low into the world. The second thought for today concerns what should be our aspirations. What are our dreams? What's most important in our lives? The world around us seems to suggest that we should aim for fame and money and power, that we should be rich, be celebrities, be in charge. But if all our aiming high is actually aiming at God, do these sorts of things really matter at all? Because God isn't really rich. I don't think he has any money in heaven. He isn't really famous. You never see him on TV. But God is the greatest and the best because he is good and true and beautiful. He is holy, in other words, to use a special word. Holiness is the name for everything about God that's special, all the amazing qualities that we find in him. And the good news, the great news, is that we too can be holy by living the sorts of lives which God wants us to live. By avoiding sin and by embracing goodness, we can be holy. We can become saints. The highest aspiration, the greatest goal, the best aim in all of human existence is to be holy, is to become a saint. The only sadness, as someone once said, is if we don't achieve this. It doesn't matter how much money we have, how successful, well-known or powerful we are. That doesn't matter so long as we are good. Here then are some top tips for achieving holiness, for aspiring to become a saint. First, we need God's help and we should ask for that help every day. Pray at the beginning of each day for God to be with you, to give you some of his goodness to help you to become a saint. Second, anywhere in the world is a place in which we can grow more holy. We can grow more holy at home, on the bus, in the street or in school. Think about what you can do in each of these situations. How can you show goodness and kindness? How can you reveal to other people the face of God? Holiness should be our highest aspiration. And let's ask God to remind us of this today. And now let's conclude today's session with a prayer to God's Holy Spirit and then the Our Father. Let us pray. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, so that I will love only what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me so, O Holy Spirit, that I may always be holy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Once again, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.